at quarterback, second in the Heisman, Michigan's most productive passer in history, number four, Jim Harbaugh. At tailback, brother of the Giants, Joe Morris, just five feet seven inches, Jamie Morris, rushed again for a thousand yards. At fullback, senior Bob Perryman, a 226 pounder. At one wide receiver, a big target, Paul Jokish, tallest on the field at six feet eight. At the other wide receiver, brilliant freshman Greg McMurtry wears number one, and many rate him the best rookie receiver in college ball. The tight end is solid sophomore Jeff Brown. The giant size offensive line for Michigan at tackle 289-pound Mike Huzar. At guard, Mike Dames. Small at 258 pounds. The center, 289 pounds. John Vitale at guard, all Big Ten, Mark Hammerstein, a 285-pound senior. And at strong tackle, number 72, All-American John Elliott. Jumbo John checks in at 306 pounds. Arizona State getting ready to come out on the field, and I talked to quarterback Jeff Van Raphorst a few moments ago, and he said, this is probably not the smartest place in the world to stand. He told me that they plan to pass 30 times, and that would be a surprise. They think they can do that on Michigan. In their ready playbook, they have 10 running plays and 40 passing plays. Now let's go back to Dick. Now let's meet the Arizona State starting offense. At quarterback senior Jeff Van Raphorst, an over 60% percentage passer, he threw for 15 touchdowns. At running back, the Sun Devils' leading rusher with 933 yards, junior Daryl Harris. The fullback is 217-pound junior Channing Williams. At wide receiver, a big play man, number 84, Aaron Cox, all-conference. Cox averaged over 20 yards a catch. The flanker is Bruce Hill, who doubles as a top kick returner. Two seniors share the tight end duties, Jeff Gallimore and Stein Koss. They had 39 catches between them. The Devils' all-Arizona line is anchored by all-American tackle Danny Villa, a 293-pound hammer. At guard, Randall McDaniel made some all-American teams 260 pounds and runs like a back. The center from Tucson, senior Kevin Thomas. At guard, Todd Kalis, a senior from Phoenix. And to tackle the chief, Jim Warren, a 300-pounder from Tempe. Those are the starters for Arizona State. The captains of the two teams being called to the center of the field where Pele will serve as the toss, uh, apparently will toss the coin. Enjoyed meeting this great star. Well, you talk about the select view of the creme de la creme, Pele, a giant. How charismatic, one-on-one, -on -one, just a man that lights up a room. Referee is Larry Thompson, a mixed crew of Big Ten and Pac-10 officials. Yourself. Michigan, you are the visitor, therefore you will call the coin. That is the head, that is the tail. Which one of you will call? You will call. Please call the coin before it is flipped by the Tournament of Roses Grand Marshal Pele. What is your call? Tails is called. It is heads. Arizona State is on the top. You may get your seat. You want to defer. Michigan, you may kick, receive, or defend a goal. You will receive. What goal will you defend? Turn around with your back to it. Michigan will receive. So Arizona State wants the ball to start the second half. It'll be Michigan who will receive to open this 73rd Rose Bowl game. By the way, today's coin is a platinum commemorative coin minted for the Rose Bowl. School emblems of the Michigan Wolverines and Arizona State Sun Devils are featured on one side and the Rose Bowl logo on the other. Now they'll join their respective coaches. And for 49-year-old John Cooper and 57-year-old Bo Schembechler, that final word to the athletes. 
And Bo, you call him a hands-on. He's a hands-on coach. In fact, he calls the offense. If he plays for the Wolverines, he's a man who goes eye to eye with his players down there in the trenches. And even though he's a little bit older, he's still, he's still got plenty of energy. John Cooper, who grew up near the University of Tennessee on a, in a small farm area near Knoxville, always a Tennessee fan. He's 49, his second year, has produced the first ever Rose Bowl trip for an Arizona team in the Pac-10. He is more a coach who coaches coaches. He lays off, lets his assistants do the main work. Delegates a lot of his responsibility to an offensive and defensive coordinator, but perhaps nowhere is the difference in style more evident than when you'll see John Cooper jump on the bench and begin to wave his yellow towel to get these Arizona fans stirred up here in the stadium. Now he'll wave his uh, towel to help the fans along. If we see Bo wave anything, it'll be his cap at an official. Uh, yeah. Better believe that, too. The Wolverines, the maize and blue in their white uniforms in Arizona State, now will deploy in their maroon and gold. The kicker, number six, Mike Shue from Mesa, Arizona. And the Wolverines in this first period will defend the goal to the north. There's no wind to speak of. The flags around this great stadium hanging limp. Michigan a slight favorite as it has been the last five years. The Big Ten team favored, but the Pac-10 team finishing with a win. And Michigan trying to turn that around. They kick toward Jamie Morris, but it goes out of bounds and flags are down. There's a flag both at the 35-yard line and, of course, for the illegal procedure of the kick out of bounds. I believe somebody was so excited, that emotional factor we talked about, that they jumped the gun and got across the line before the ball was kicked. They'll take one of those calls and move it back five yards and kick it again. And Shue does not have great length on his kickoffs as it is. So he'll have to boot this one from the 30. Michigan should come up with good field position. A dead ball foul. Illegal procedure. Member of the Remember kicking the team stepped out. Before the kick, the ball will be re-kicked. Five-yard penalty. Well, Shue has had a warm-up chance, and now Eric Campbell and Jamie Morris will deploy for the Wolverines deep. Morris on the near side. Dick, we talked about the emotional factor. Down on that field, this is, this is where it's at its peak, and you really need to take one good shot. You need to get in there and get popped one time before you can kind of settle down. Arizona State. 9-1-1, one one, lost to Arizona in their last game, tied to Washington State. Michigan's perfect season, ruined by the University of Minnesota. To Morris, at the 10. The junior from Massachusetts is to the 33-yard line. Jim Harbaugh getting himself ready. Final word from Bo Schembechler. Bob Perryman, an outstanding runner and blocker at fullback with Jamie Morris, a 1,000-yard rusher. Paul Jokic, the tall wide receiver. Greg McMurtry, the talented freshman, and the tight end Jeff Brown. And that huge offensive line of Hussar, Dames, Vitali, Hammerstein, and Elliott. Elliott, the All-America. Number 72, the strong side tackle. From the 34, Morris fumbles, and Arizona State has not recovered. No signal yet. Apparently, Michigan retains possession. Morris was able to scoop it back, and almost that turnover that we saw haunting Iowa all of last year. That nervousness we spoke of evidenced on this first play as the handoff goes awry from Harbaugh. It was never in the hands of Jamie Morris, and Jamie did a great job of getting that football out of the hands of Skip McClendon. Another angle. As it just was not a clean exchange, Morris did not have a grasp. It was there for a moment for McClendon, number 88. Second and long. Harbaugh's first throw is deep. Freshman at the 45 of ASU. The receivers on these two squads, kind of a toss-up. But Arizona State does not have anyone to match the speed of Greg McMurtry, number one. 
He is a gazelle, much bigger than he would appear. Graceful downfield, and this is the kind of pattern you will see from both teams today, running down and to the inside. Both defensive backfields tend to drop way off that ball. Big play for the Wolverines, 25 yards and a first down. The second tight end, Derek Walker in motion, and flags go down. Let's go back to McMurtry as they discuss the penalty. The legal procedure against Michigan. McMurtry from Brockton, Massachusetts, of course, the home of former heavyweight champion Rocky Marciano and Marvin Hagler, for that matter. He was the number one pick of the Boston Red Sox as an outfielder. Dead ball. False start, start against the offense. Still first down. McMurtry wearing number one. The story is that that was part of the recruiting technique of Schembechler. He said, I, if you come to Ann Arbor, you'll get number one, Anthony Carter's number. And we want you to wear that symbol of being top. And he is great size, 6'3", 205. In baseball, they liken him to a, a Daryl Strawberry type. Morris, and a flag down, face mask, it appeared at the 48-yard line. As Trace Armstrong got him. So a fumble, a long pass completion, and two penalties uh, spot the early going, and the emotions are there. Defensively for Arizona State, and this is one of the better defenses in the nation. Skip McClendon was a freshman at Northwestern. Sean Patterson, he has a bad knee. Larry McLaughlin will see several uh, defensive men at that nose guard position. There are the linebackers. Scott Stephen twice and all pack 10 number 90. First and nine for Wolverine. We'll catch the back four after this play. First down went with a face mask penalty. And it's Morris again trying the center as you predicted Merlin Olsen. He's down to the 41 yard line short yardage. Greg Clark, who led the Devils in tackles through the course of the year, number 36, got Morris. Eric Allen and Jeff Joseph, although we'll see a lot of Anthony Parker, number 32, at that corner. Darren Willis, a hitter, and Robbie Boyd will be the deep men, although, boy, that rover back, he'll find him most anywhere. Dick, one of the things that is vastly different about these two coaches is their use of personnel, and that's something we ought to talk about early in this game. It's a long five on second down. That's Gerald White, number 22, in the lineup for the Wolverines as the wingman. Harbaugh dumps it off, and Perryman has a first down at the 34. Skip McClendon trailing the play made the tackle. What made that possible was the time to throw. Dan Saliomua at the nose slipped. They had a stunt down there. His feet went out from underneath him on the natural turf. They didn't get pressure from the inside. And then it was time to get that ball off to the receiver for the first down. There you see Scott Steven, the devil back, also falling down. So a lot of tripping and falling going on here in the early going. Again, I think these players have yet to settle down, get into the mold, get going. First look at an option series there, and the dive man picks up a couple before Stacy Harvey, number 57, can make the tackle for the Sun Devils. Perriman for a couple. Harvey returning home, like so many of the Arizona State players from Southern California, but Harvey, 57, is the only man who played here in Pasadena, at Pasadena High School, where he was a quarterback. the wishbone and Morris trapped in the backfield that's that lateral defensive speed of the Sun Devils led by Scott Steven Scott Steven they call him a devil back he'll play linebacker it will get up on the line of scrimmage in the pass rush he'll drop back almost as a strong safety extremely quick little counterplay to Morris coming back against the grain but watch number 90 
flying in. Good open field tackle. And look how many red shirts, how many Aztec, or how many of those Arizona State players are flying in to help. Third and eight for Harbaugh. Plenty of time. Morris. And it's a first down at the 18-yard line. A 14-yard play on third and eight. Eric Allen made the hit, but Morris, an excellent reception under duress. We mentioned Harbaugh's ability as a passer. This pass in the seam. Both teams playing a high percentage of zone, and he had to hit it right there. Got him put down. All you need to do is scrape that toe, and they'll give you the reception. So the key plays on this drive for Michigan have been passes to McMurtry 25 yards and Morris 14 yards on that third down. Morris. Touchdown, Michigan. Jamie Morris, 18 yards. gave the nod in the running back area to Michigan. We mentioned Morris's quickness. He's only five foot seven. Not a huge back, but so quick that he's very difficult to get a hold of and difficult to tackle. Oh, and a quick two-point play. And uh, they've got it. Michigan has never done that. Bo is pulling out all the stops today. They always line up their line to one side and then bring them in, but they didn't do it that time. Gerald White collects the two points. It's 8 nothing Wolverines. This is a different Michigan It's versatile, and it has a surprise or two, and Bo Schembechler goes for a two-point play, and punter Monty Robbins hits Gerald White for two after this, this touchdown play. Watch Jamie Morris just explodes, started off tackle, and gets outside. It's the missed tackle right there by Darren Willis, number four, and then a very determined effort. Look at Morris stretching over to lay that ball down, much like a run he made against Ohio State for a touchdown late in that game. Morris, he's uh, short on stature, as is his brother Joe Morris, but long on talent and desire. They say he's 179. Someone said 150 is closer. But now here's what they did on the extra point. I asked Michigan if they've ever run a play with their players over there. They said, we've never done that. Well, they have now. A quick pass over there to Gerald White. And they caught Arizona State napping. And it's worth two points. Mike Gillette throwing to Gerald White to make it 8 nothing. Pat Moons, number three, to kick off for Michigan. Channing Williams, the fullback, has it taken right out of his grasp by Garrett. Chris Garrett, the wide receiver, is out to the 32-yard line. Now Arizona State on the field for the first time offensively. And Jeff Van Rapport, number 10, the quarterback. And here's the man that uh, will operate with him. Channing Williams and Daryl Harris. Harris rushed for nearly 1,000 yards on the year. Aaron Cox is very dangerous, number 84. Bruce Hill is the other wide receiver. Jeff Gallimore, Stein Cost will share the tight end position via the All-America. McDaniel, Thomas, Kalis, and Warren, a big, big offensive line. From the 32, the Sun Devils begin. And Channing Williams, nothing there. Center of the Michigan defense stopping Williams after a yard gain. Messner, Harris, and Fulkertsma, the front three. Willingham, Moeller, who led the team in tackles. Andre McIntyre and Dieter Heron. Heron is the fastest of that core. Eric Campbell, the All-America Garland Rivers at the corners. Tony Gant and Ivan Hicks at safety. Second and nine for ASU. Play action by Van Rapphorst. Has a man open. It's Aaron Cox in a first down at the Michigan 45. 
Doug Mallory made the tackle 23 yards on the play. These defenses operate with the same style. Drop back. Keep everything in front of you and inside of you. It means there's going to be an opening in the middle behind the linebackers and in front of those defensive backs. We've seen both teams take advantage of that here in their first drives. Now just as Jim Harbaugh set up the touchdown with his passes, Van Rathorst gets Arizona State in Michigan territory, and this is Darrell Harris weaving his way to the 28-yard line. First down. Nick, I mentioned that these two coaches feel differently about the use of their players. Bo is really the kind of guy that wants his best 11 on the field all the time. At the same time, on the other side of the field, John Cooper really has two people almost at every position alternating. There's Daryl Harris showing us some excellent quickness. Not a big back. They worry about his durability. Five and 11 and a half and listed at 180. Probably isn't that heavy. He's a junior from Pomona, California. First down inside the Michigan 30. Eight nothing Wolverines lead. Harris again. And he's dropped for a loss. Outside the 30-yard line, and a solid hit, Fulkertsma and McIntyre as the Big Ten celebrates a win in the Cotton Bowl. That final just in, the Buckeyes beat Southwest champion Texas A&M 28-12. Man who was at the bottom of that stack, Billy Harris, nose tackle. When we talk about what's going to happen for this defense today. He is one of the most critical of those defenders for Michigan. Second down, 11. Van Rapphorst incomplete. He had two men open. Garrett cutting across and Paul Day underneath. And unable to come up with the catch was Day the running back. And again, that's something that can happen early. I, I credit that to emotion again. Someone just not running the discipline pattern. You only want one receiver in that spot. The fact that there were two there actually caused it to be a missed pass. Dean of Big Ten coaches, Shem Becker, in his 18th year, looks at Arizona State set up with third and 11, the shotgun for Van Rapphorst. Good protection, going deep, incomplete to Hill. I believe at the 30-yard line, Arizona State. Well, they're going to bring on their field goal kicker, Kent Bostrom, but this will be a long one. In fact, if he makes it, could be the longest ever for the sophomore from Wheaton, Illinois. His longest ever is 47 yards. It came last year in the Holiday Bowl. And this one would be 47 or 48 yards. Garrett, the wide receiver, is the holder. Kent Rostrum will attempt the field goal. A 47-yard attempt. As long as this year, as you saw, 46. No good. So Bostrom unable to connect from 47. And with eight minutes and two seconds remaining in the opening period of this Rose Bowl, it remains eight to nothing. It looked good most of the way, but tailed left wide at the end. Well, we talked about the New Year's Day being a time for emotion and for surprise as well. And for Bo Schembechler, 57, he's still learning some new tricks and showing them. Amazing that he would, at 57, put in the wishbone and take the best parts of it, he says, to try and juice up this offense for his Michigan Wolverines. And then the gambling on the two-pointer, boy, he brought them all out of the bag today. Bob Perriman, after the missed field goal by Arizona State, not able to find much up the middle against that Sun Devil defense. Eight nothing Wolverines as they march 66 yards in nine plays in the opening possession of this game. And little Jamie Morris scooted 18 yards for the touchdown. And then on a quick count, Mike Gillette, the place kicker, threw a short pass to White, Gerald White, for the conversion and Michigan leads 8 0. Midway through the first quarter. Morris, where well, he's tough in the open field, he must remind Arizona State fans of David Adams, who ran so very effectively. Same size, same quickness for the University of Arizona. 
have you talked to Jamie Morris about his brother Joe, who's built, as you said, just almost exactly to the same proportions? He'll tell you he's a half inch taller. <laughs> but I bet if you ask Joe, Joe says the same thing. They have a great relationship, and there was an incident after the Ohio State game. He doesn't like to talk about Joe to the press. I mean, they have a close relationship, and brother Joe helps him out. But he, he just so not talk about him. We'll finish that story as White comes out on a wing. Third and four. Too much time, apparently. Well, that'll cost uh, the Wolverines five. Who said Bo and Mello? Get the offense. Third down. So back to Jamie Morris. Here's the movement before we finish that, Dick. There's the movement, the lifting up by the center. That's what they call Morris, after the Ohio State game, apparently was being interviewed in the locker room, and Joe Morris had made a quick trip from the Meadowlands from practice into Ohio State to see the game, was standing next to him, and one of the reporters asked, uh, Jamie, have you heard from Joe? <laughs> he said, I felt close to him all day. He kept telling me, run, 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 but never introduced him. Look at Harbaugh in trouble. Back at the 33. Scott Steven, number 90, the senior from Los Angeles. And the Wolverines will have to punt for the first time. Monty Robbins. In the last Michigan game at Hawaii, kicked 182 yards for a Michigan record. Anthony Parker, deep. Anthony Parker, a dangerous return man for the Sun Devils. No fair catch. And Parker pays for it. It's an interesting matchup. It's the nation's top net punting team, Michigan, against the best return team, Arizona State. Michigan wins that one. He led ASU to three straight Fiesta Bowl wins. Still leads the Devils with 59 career touchdown passes. He stayed in the Southwest to star as a cowboy. He's Danny White. First, Danny White and his daddy, Wizard White, was a great running back with Arizona State and in All-America. Nebraska, 10 LSU, 7 in the Sugar Bowl. And earlier, Auburn beat Southern California 16-7 in the Citrus. Ohio State has defeated Texas A&M 28-12 in the Cotton. That is not a final. We understand that game still in progress. Channing Williams, ball carrier. Channing Williams, short yardage. The Sugar Bowl Run score is halftime. Number 49, Andy Moore. Halftime score there. I think we talked about the gambling nature of Bo Schembechler. But there's no question that with a month to get ready for this game, John Cooper will also be throwing a few interesting wrinkles into this game. Van Rapphorst. off to his running back, Daryl Harris. And you can see the conservative nature of this Arizona State team. Kyle Harris, as he started to move to the outside, protecting the ball. Arizona State incredibly fumbled only, or lost only, four fumbles all year. John Cooper talks a great deal about protecting the football, not only as a runner, but also as a passer. In fact, he had, he had words with his quarterback earlier in the year about that. We'll talk about that. Third down and three. And close to a first down is Harris, who absorbs quite a hit from Dieter Heron, number 35, outside linebacker from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I don't believe he made it. They're going to have to kick it away. Very close. Dieter Heron, kind of the, the wild man, the free spirit of that Wolverine defense, there to put a real hit on him. Put him down. Harris unable to pick it up. Earlier today, Auburn defeating USC 16 to 7 in the Citrus Bowl. Eric had told his last game. Short kick by Shu. But takes a kind Arizona State bounce inside the 25-yard line. 
Three minutes and 43 seconds remain. First quarter, Michigan by eight. Oh, down by eight. Michigan with the early lead, 8-0, and the football at the Wolverine 24-yard line. A reminder, later in today's game, we'll be selecting the outstanding player for each team. Budweiser will donate a total of $2,000 to the school's general scholarship fund. Jim Harbaugh comes out with White and Morris split behind him, and now they shift into the eye. Morris the tailback. Pass on first down to Morris. Out of bounds across the 35-yard line. Scott Steven with another tackle, 11 yards and a first down. We talked about that huge offensive line. Number 72, Jumbo Elliott. What a, what a horse he is. He's the strong tackle. There he is on the left side of your picture. Watch he and Mark Hartenstein, Hammerstein, just nailing. Sean Patterson to the ground on that play. There was no room. That's like running into a wall in there. First down across the 35 for Michigan. Morris. Ooh. He tests the center of the Sun Devil defense and earns three. Stacy Harvey spearheading the charge. Elliott is 6'7", 306 pounds. Working again on Patterson. Was able to shuck uh, the block and get in on the tackle. Well, it's just a junior, and they're already talking about possible Outland Award for him next year, a Lombardi Award lineman of the year. They remind uh, Michigan fans, Dan Deergorf does Elliot. Flags are down. Warp Harbaugh throws it away as he sidearms it. It was deflected by... Jim Reynosa, number five, was putting on the pressure. Let's check the flag. Against Michigan. And I guess Merlin, one of the risks in having all of those offenses is you're going to have some illegal shifts and motions. Oof, you are. That's uh, Jumbo Elliott trying to shift somebody's head off, off to one side there. Illegal shift against the offense is declined. Third down. Electing to take the down. Force Michigan into a third and long situation. Third and eight. Not much yet for John Cooper's Arizona State team. He's got to get things going here. Get him stopped. Get something on the board. His best pass rusher is in there. Number 94, Sauté Sapolu. The draw and read well by the Sun Devils at the 40 as Clark and Harvey, those two inside linebackers, collaborate. And Michigan will have to punt it. That's that quickness we talked about on defense. That kind of play with Jamie Morris, and you've seen how quick he is, often will open up, give you a chance to pick up that first down. Clark read it well and was right there to shut it down. Anthony Parker drops back deep for Arizona State. Junior from Tempe. Anthony Parker. Was injured in game four against UCLA. An average 22 yards of punt return. Got nothing on his first. Ooh, bad kick. And that's going to skip out of bounds in front of the Michigan bench at the 40 yard line. Make it the 39. Robbins, who averaged 44 yards a punt on the year, gets only 21 on that one. Don't think you want to get close to Bowe when you go to that sideline. Next on NBC Sports, your New Year's Day celebration will continue. We invite you to stay with us for the Orange Bowl down to Miami as the explosive Oklahoma Sooners. Some still argue they think they're the best team in the country. They're rated number three. And it's the number nine ranked Razorbacks of Arkansas. That'll be coming your way next on NBC Sports. Van Rapphorst to the pass on first down. And a fine catch across the way by Bruce Hill. Speared that one did the senior from Antelope Valley High School out in Lancaster, California. 
When Arizona State wants to get out to its flanker, Hill, they often will roll out. Van Raphorst, under pressure, had to fire that football. And again, you see them working on the on the little seams in that zone. But a fine play by Van Raphorst, who got that ball off under pressure, and an excellent catch by Hill. Saw Hill really move Eric Campbell deep, and it was Heron who came back from the linebacker spot to get him out of bounds in Michigan territory at the 48. Draw to Channing Williams, breaking the tackle, and he earns about five yards on the play. Heron in on the stop again. Billy Harris, the nose tackle, has a chance to take him down in the backfield. Get Channing Williams as he starts. You'll see it here. Watch 56. Slips around, gets a hit right there, but couldn't get his arms locked around Channing Williams. Good job of picking up about six and a half yards. Two fullbacks are in, Channing Williams and Darren Tupper, number 48, on second and four. Williams breaking a tackle again. And he's to the Michigan 40, a yard shy of a first down. Garland Rivers blitzing from the outside again with an opportunity to make the tackle in the backfield. That's twice in a row that Williams has been able to break away from those tackles and get some yardage. We're in the final minute of the first quarter here at the Rose Bowl. Michigan scoring on its first possession and converting a two-point play, leading 8-0. Arizona State's second visit into Wolverine territory. Here a third and one. Williams trying to be close. That second effort might have earned the first down. John Willingham, 39. 49 Moeller in on the play. And it is a first down for Arizona State at the 38. We talked about the movement of this defense for Michigan. Now watch these two tackles as they'll slide into the gaps to try and stop this play. Williams, who's coming in there as well, gets good blocking from McDaniel 62, who just kept driving on his man to help make room. That's what you were talking about, how Michigan trying to compensate, maybe not the stronger defense in this game. And Rapphorst, good play action, but has to throw it away. Closest man was 83 Stein Cost, the tight end. He's clever with the ball, isn't he? He certainly is. He's a very fluid quarterback. Good fake right here. And as the quarterback, he'll make that a legitimate kind of fake and then just continue to flow back to get set up. Michigan's defensive backs were not cool, however. Well, if you longtime fans of Big Ten football, if that sounds familiar, Van Raphorst, his dad, played with Ohio State when they won the Big Ten championship in 61, but the faculty of Ohio State voted not to send the team here. Gets a good block on the corner, and the fullback is one tackle shy of a touchdown. Brought down from behind at the 20-yard line after a 17-yard game. Doug Mallory made the play. That's an option play. Arizona State has not run the option all year. John Cooper, with a little extra time to get ready for this game, has put in the option. And people who know him know he wants to put in more of the option type plays. Watch the quick play here. Kind of pulls people in and then flips it out to Channing Williams on the option. Catching the Michigan defense by surprise, I'm sure. They haven't seen Arizona State run that play before. And that is the end of the first quarter. The second period would open with Arizona State deep. Remarkable shots we've long appreciated from the Goodyear blimp. 1987 marks the 62nd consecutive year that Goodyear has flown the blimp over major sporting events. That's the Columbia from Carson, California, piloted by Tom Mattis of Huntington Beach. Down there in the green of the turf of the Rose Bowl, Arizona State trailing 8-0. First play, second quarter, the ball just inside the Michigan 21. Course, recovers and gains a yard or two inside the 20. Flip-flopping of the lines, Merlin, you use that expression. Well, Dick, what we're actually talking about is the fact that both of these teams want to have their offensive linemen specialized. That means they'll line up once on the left-hand side, the next time they'll come over on the right-hand side. They talk about the strong tackle. That's this man. He's lined up next to the tight end. They want him to do a lot of the double-teaming. This man 
the quick guard does most of the pulling. So he's a specialist. And of course, this man has to block and pass protect in the open field. Very important that they have him available for that. And that may be the most important reason for flip flop. Good play action by Van Rapphorst, but a good hit by Michigan. Garland Rivers drilling Stein Koss just as he tried to pull in that pass from Van Rapphorst at the 10-yard line. There's Rivers, a senior from McKinley High School in the Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall of Fame town of Canton, Ohio. Again, we mentioned the defensive philosophy similar for these two teams. Keep them in front of you. And if they catch the ball, knock it loose, shake it loose. Not well caught. That ball really never under control, as you can see. Actually thrown a little bit high in that situation. Third down and nine. Shotgun Van Rapport. Goes for six. No one there except Michigan. And almost intercepted by Doug Mallory. He's the son of the Big Ten Coach of the Year, Bill Mallory, with the Indiana Hoosiers. Chris Garrett, the man, I believe, who opted to go outside when quarterback thought he was headed inside. They'll have a conversation about that. Somebody dead wrong in that situation. Bostrom, who missed wide left from 47 yards, will try a 37-yard kick for Arizona State's first points of the game. He's got it. And with less than a minute gone in the second period, it's eight to three. Bostrom, who missed only four all season, 15 for 19, on the money for the Sun Devils. The 1987 Rose Bowl is brought to you by Dodge, setting new standards of performance. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Bud Light, everything else is just a light. Michigan 8, Arizona State 3. And with 14 minutes and 6 seconds left in this first half, Shu to kick it off. Morris and Campbell are deep for Michigan. for the sidelines and out of bounds in the five-yard penalty. Back to the field goal. Let's for take Arizona a look State. at uh, Dick at, at number 15, David Arnold. Now watch him as he starts inside and suddenly Craig Kasky, number 49, just turns outside and buries him. An outstanding block to protect that uh, kicker. Well, Arizona State has had this problem most of the year. Erratic on their kickoffs, and again, just as it was at the start of the game. Shu will have to kick from his own 30-yard line. Five-yard penalty and a re-kick. A statistical note on this first half. Quarterback Van Rapphorst of Arizona State has become the third passer in Sun Devil history to pass for 2,000 yards in a season, joining Danny White and Danny Sproul in that elite list. Moves this one down the middle with Gerald White, 35, 40, and Michigan benefits. Good field position for the Mason Blue. Ray Wittenberg, freshman from Fremont High School in Los Angeles, made the tackle. Michigan will start from its own 42-yard line. Harbaugh brings his team in the huddle, number four. Went to Palo Alto High School. His dad was the defensive coach with Stanford at the time. Since that uh, period, became the head coach at Western Michigan, was fired at the end of this year, and has been recently hired as an assistant at Pittsburgh, the University of Pittsburgh. Jamie Morris with a blocker across the 50 and down to the 47 in the first down. Darren Willis was the last maroon shirt left. Mark Hammerstein applied the key block. 
Finding the seams in that Sun Devil defense. Good block, 67. John Vitale, you see him right there, cutting off the nose tackle, Larry McLaughlin. And the Sun Devils from the inside, that was Trace Armstrong, 93, who couldn't get out to fill the hole. Wishbone. And the give to the fullback. Big concern. The wishbone. John Cooper said very simply, he said it forces us to play assignment defense rather than run to the ball defense. You see a good play inside by McLaughlin, who read the play. His assignment is to fill and pick up that uh, crashing fullback in there. He got a good piece of it, but he still got a couple of yards. Credit Bob Perriman, the fullback with three yards. It's second and seven. McMurtry to the right. Ken Higgins, an academic All-America, to the left. Morris eluding a possible trap in the backfield, quick enough to get to the 40, and Greg Clark made the stop. Kind of tickled by Bo Schembechler earlier in the week. I asked him about his offensive formations. He said, we run everything except the shotgun. He said, I don't have time to teach that. You have to admire a man, though, at 57 who is such a tremendous record in Michigan, still looking to improve and adding the wishbone to his attack. He, and he likes it, interestingly, as a passing formation. I like what he said, too. He said, just messing around on us. He was messing around on us. Third and four. Our ball protected well. Now it breaks down. Dumps it off to Morris for a first down at the 27. Good job by Harbaugh. And one of the things you look for in a quarterback is his ability to stay back in that pocket and avoid the rush and still keep his concentration downfield to spot the open receiver. Harbaugh was getting some heat, just stepped around back there. Finally, he found Jamie Morris. You see him right there, just a little sidestep to get away from the pressure. That's Kalini Wright, 96. Bearing down on him, but he got it off and got it completed. First down at the Arizona State 26. Michigan leading 8-3. to three. Harbaugh has to eat it on the wishbone as charging in was Stacy Harvey. The 230-pound junior from Pasadena. Set his dad's ear a barber in San Diego to watch him. You'll see number 57 coming inside out. Harbaugh not really quick enough to be a wishbone quarterback. And you'll see it right there. He simply pulled down from behind, but he is a smart quarterback. You wouldn't dare put in the wishbone in a single year unless he was. There's Stacy Harvey, big play man for this Sun Devil defense. I asked him if he got his haircut from his dad. He said, well, <laughs> these are easy ones. Again, floating it up to Gerald White, and he's out of bounds. They'll mark it around the 23. You see all those Wolverines on the back of the head of Jim Harbaugh. Those are given for big plays, for meeting team goals. Of course, the longer you play and the better you play, you see him turn his head, the more of those little fellas you get on there. And that distinct helmet of Michigan, as long as I can remember, the Wolverines have had that look going back to the days of Prince Chrysler. That great team that came out here in 48 with Chappius and Yerges and Bump Elliott and Weisenberger. Third down and six. Harbaugh. Complete to Higgins. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Darren Willis with a tackle, and again, Harbaugh throwing on the move. Excellent job, and he's got heat again, but finds a way to slide a little bit, get a little extra time, and that's a gutty receiver. Not a big receiver, not great speed, but that's the young man that hasn't dropped a pass all season long. He hasn't dropped a note all season long. They have a four-point average as an All-A, and he had a 4.1 has been accepted recently at the University of Michigan Law School, will probably play as a fifth-year senior next year while attending law school. First and goal, pullback, Perriman. Fumble, and it's recovered by Arizona State, but you see a flag down. Will that negate the recovery by the Sun Devils? Give it back. 
back with a with a ball against the defense for face guarding or for a face mask infraction. A five yard penalty. It'll be halfway to the goal line here. Let's go inside and Michigan in a two tight end situation running out of the wishbone handing it right there to Perriman the big bowling back we mentioned the big strong fullback dropped very early that ball already on the ground just stripped out of his hands. I did not see the face mask. Yeah, it came after he had fumbled but nevertheless part of the play. Jim Beckler calling Jamie Morris over. Now mark off. The penalty from the spot of the tackle. Face mask. Defense. Second down. Half the Set distance. First down. First down. Half the distance to the goal. So that brings up first and goal on the automatic first down. Inside the two. That's a big break. Arizona State at top Michigan on the fumble, but committed the face mask. Michigan retains possession. And they're right on the doorstep of adding to that 8-3 lead. It's a game of breaks. And if they go your way, you've got to just take them and run. Bo, I think looking at the 30-second clock and wanting them to reset it, or the 25-second clock, let's call it right here. Harbaugh sneaks it in. for two points on the first touchdown you wonder whether Bo may have another trick up his sleeve he said he has set his kickers onto the field but let's go in and look at the quarterback sneak by Harbaugh right in behind John Vitale there and Hammerstein doing a great job of just launching himself so far he's done nothing to to show us that he's not the All-American he was billed to be. Having a fine game. Gillette's trying for a point right down the middle. And with nine minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the first half, Michigan leads 15 to three. This one play after a fumble that had at first appeared to cost Michigan a chance to score. The penalty saves it, and they get seven. Number one was a three-time Michigan All-American. Led the team in receiving all three years. Michigan's all-time leading receiver and passes caught. Touchdowns and receiving yards. And he's added 80 points to his number. Number 81 now, Anthony Carter with the Minnesota Vikings. One of the greats, Anthony Carter, to grace this Rose Bowl game. And his uh, precious number one, not used a season or two, but worn by freshman... Greg McMurtry this year. Moons to kick it off. Williams and Hill are deep. Bruce Hill returned one for a touchdown against California you saw earlier. This is to Channing Williams. And the fullback hit hard at the 27-yard line. White and Brandt in on the tackle for Michigan. I think we're still very early in this game, but John Cooper has got to be making some decisions over there. He did not want to get this far behind. He wanted to run the football, basically, and throw a few passes. He wanted to throw a few more than I think the Michigan expected. But right now, behind as he is, he may have to elect to give Van Rapworst a little more freedom to throw that football. Hill has sent left, Cox to the right. Complete to Daryl Harris at the 32-yard line. Short gain of about six. On Van Rapworth's left wrist, you'll see a wristband. Written on that wristband is a quotation out of the Bible. Came to him in a letter. You see it on his hand. Came to him in a letter from a retired Air Force man after he'd had a horrible game, was benched against Washington State. Five interceptions in that game. You see that writing on that. He's come back now, came back from that game to go five games without an interception and still carries that quotation from the Bible on his wrist. Second and four. And it's Harris printing into the secondary, and he's all the way to the Michigan 49. Mallory with a tackle along with Tony Gant. 19 for Harris. He looks as if he wanted more. A slant 
right there. You'll have a chance to see it inside, and they were able to take advantage. When you are doing a lot of planning and moving, sometimes you open up gaps. That's exactly what happened to the Michigan defense there. Harris able to spot the gap and take advantage of it. But for the third time in this first half, Arizona State moves into Michigan territory. They missed on a long field goal and connected from 37 yards. Their other two trips. Harris pounded after a couple yard gain, maybe three. Aaron spearheading the charge. A senior, a 219 pounder. Good receivers can't just run the football. They've also got to be able to block. Number 29, Bruce Hill, coming in to get a piece right there of the defensive end, put it right in his ribs. Good Steve job, Thiebert. that's Steve Thiebert, number 86. Second and the long seven. Tony Johnson, a sophomore, is in at wide receiver, number 17. Play action, down the middle, complete. And a first down at the 29 to Aaron Cox. This junior from Los Angeles Dorsey High School caught 40 last year, had 29 this season. I mentioned a conversation between Ben Raphorst and his coach, John Cooper. Ben Raphorst wanted to still throw the ball 45, 50 times a game, something he did under Daryl Rogers, his former coach. But John Cooper said, we're not going to do it that way, son. We're going to do it my way, which is to throw the ball more effectively. Well, today, the combination as he's throwing into the defense finds the open man very effective in getting that completion. Michigan. And Arizona State, and apparently they're going to call that against uh, Jim Warren. The Michigan man charging in was able to get back, but Warren reacted to it. Dave Folkertsma entered the neutral zone, didn't touch anyone, and those offensive linemen, once they're down in that stance, can't lift up their hands. Andy Muller saying, hey, we got you. And Warren saying, okay, all right, all right, you got me. His grandmother, Warren's grandmother, is a full-blooded Sioux Indian. She celebrated her 100th birthday last July. They're going to wave off the flag. There is no the action was legal. The down will be replayed. The old left-handed pitcher from Miami of Ohio, Bo Shem Beckler. He likes those officials about as much as he likes us. <laughs> well, he said, said, I like them. He said, I like reporters, too. <laughs> Williams, the fullback, close to the 25-yard line on three down. Andy Moeller, all Big Ten linebacker. His dad is the defensive coordinator for these Wolverines, Gary, and the former Illinois head coach. I asked Andy, I said, when your dad sends those signals in, do you ever have a better idea to call your own signals? He said, only if my mom says it's okay. <laughs> There's a smart young man. That's quite a family. His mother's brother is Joe Morrison, the head coach in South Carolina, the former Giant. Darren Tupper, number 48 in the game at fullback. Van Rapphorst, and then unable to hit his tight end, Gallimore. Good pressure by number 60, Mark Messner. A very difficult pass to throw as Van Rapphorst rolls out to his left. He's going against the strength of his body, and you see him. He almost has to throw back against his body to get that ball out of there. Mark Messner, number 60, is dumping Van Rapphorst very unceremoniously on his back. That was a big play by Messner. I believe the fake was uh, set up so that Van Rapphorst would have more time. Total yardage almost dead even, but not the score. Michigan leads 15-3, and it's a third down pass. Complete. Darrell Harris, first down. Andre McIntyre made the tackle, and Van Rapport's rubbing that throwing elbow. He stays in the huddle as Cooper makes about five player changes. We'll see more of that. That could be a factor late in this game. They're going to have a fresher group of players than Michigan will on the field. Williams down inside the 10 and close to another first down. 
Molo, the tackler. Looking from the end zone, a feeling of that development of that play, cutting back against the grain, getting good blocking from those homeboys up front. Williams picking up good yardage, second short, tough down the defense. The Sand Hill way out to the right. Two tight ends bookend the offensive line. Play action, wide open and almost intercepted. Arizona State had Williams open in the flat Van Rapp horse overshooting the mark and Arnold David Arnold had that pass been a little longer he had nothing but 95 yards of real estate ahead of him beautifully set up the receiver is open but Van Rapp horse simply throws the ball too high gets it over the top of his receiver you'll see it skip right there couple inches more that's all you needed and you got an interception the difference in the two offenses thus far certainly has been a quarterback our ball has hit the passes Van Rapphorst has not third and short almost intercepted it's incomplete but Moeller moving in front of the intended target the tight ends nine costs so again the drive stalls and once again the field goal unit called on for Arizona State Andy Bowler, leading tackler the last two years, a smart, smart football player. The leading interceptor this year because he knows how to get himself into position. You see him getting a little congratulatory hug from his dad as he came off the sideline. This one will be 27 yards. So he's gone 47 missed, 37 good. 27 is good. With five minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the first half of this Rose Bowl game, the Big Ten co-champions, Michigan, lead Arizona State 15 to 6. John Cooper, my family, are great fans at Arizona State. I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. Coach Cooper, who follows Dan Devine, Frank Cush, Daryl Rogers as the head man at Arizona State. He's really had to campaign to get that head coaching job. Finally got the job at Tulsa and then with help from Terry Donahue the UCLA coach was named Arizona State's head man two years ago. You see that pom bomb in his back pocket. You may see him starting to wave that right now though he doesn't want to it's not the crowd he's got to get pumped up it's his players they got to get some more scores on the board. Shoe hits this one high. Jamie Morris fumbles at the seven. He's at the ten. And so often these break after you recover and he's out to the 23 and a flag is down. Mark Tingstad. Stacy uh, Harvey there for Arizona State and the penalty against the Wolverines apparently. You figure one like that has to be an illegal block or a clip. Blocking below the waist on a kick return. I think that's a good rule. I really do. Protection for those who are trying to cover the kick, for those who are down there. And there's the fumble. Uh, you're absolutely right about the timing of this. By throwing the timing off, and I think there's a burst of adrenaline right at that point, too. Sometimes those go all the way. They mark it back to the 11 and a half. So technically Michigan starts at its 12 yard line and they bring out Jokish and Perriman. Miami and Penn State tomorrow night. The winner of the National Collegiate Championship 8 o'clock Eastern Time 5 here in the West on NBC. And the noise from a predominantly an Arizona State crowd. They have an estimated 40,000, but I would guess more than that here compared to what looks to be about 10,000 Michigan fans. Have we ever, and this is our eighth Rose Bowl game, seen them have to stop play on the field for crowd noise? I don't think we have, Dick. When you look at the yellow pom-poms, they stretch from one end zone across the far side all the way to the other end zone. That's almost all Sun Devil territory. Now in college ball, that quarterback can take, in the words of the officials, forever if he wants. As we look at all of those yellow pom-poms being waved, I'll bet there are some real stories out there about how people went about trying to get tickets oh. for this game because you got to know that the Arizona State 
people say they could have sold this whole stadium out. Harbaugh, apparently at Wisconsin, they delayed the game almost a half an hour before Michigan finally engineered a play. Now they tone down. And with a score of 15 to 6, five and a half minutes left in the first half. Harbaugh still reluctant. He's going to wait him out. There he goes. Yeah, <laughs> these crowds are a sophisticated crowd. They know when to cheer. There's a second warning, which is made to the crowd by the official. And the third time, they'll take away a timeout from the offending team. I'm not so sure I agree with this. I think. The way this stands are constructed, enough of that noise is going up. You ought to be able to run a play, Dick. He's just getting them into it now. <laughs> they like playing the game with him. Well, he's academic old Big Ten, a Big Ten player of the year, Harbaugh, the senior. He knows what he's doing. He's not going to lose his poise. And he gives to Morris. Wrapped up at the nine-yard line by Skip McClendon from Detroit, Michigan. He wanted to be a Wolverine. He wanted a piece of Jamie Morris on that one, and he got it very, very quick to the outside. You see Paul Jokic getting the call, walking onto the field. Six foot eight, 240 pounds, runs a 4-5, 40. Well, I'll tell you that. That's a big, quick end. Now he came to Michigan as part of a talented basketball recruiting class. Harbaugh throwing from deep in his own end. Going for McMurtry. And batted away at the last second by Eric Allen. Harbaugh lofting that one some 50 yards plus in the air. A very accurate throw. But just an excellent job here by Eric Allen. Matching speed, getting excellent position. Well, that ball bounced in the air. I think it hit uh, the receiver in the, in the helmet, McMurtry. He may have been shielded from the ball, and it appeared to hit him right on the side of the helmet. I think maybe Allen got a hand on it, too, Dick. It looked like his hands were in good position there. Third down and a dozen for Bo Schembechler's Wolverines. There's Larry Marmee calling the defenses on the far side. Audible, perhaps, by Harbaugh. And it's Morris up the middle for about five, and that'll bring up fourth down to the pleasure of the Arizona State fans. When Jim Harbaugh was holding his team on the line, I'm looking down there. There's, there's Marmee. We mentioned him. One of the first things that John Cooper did when he took the job here, he said, I got to get me some great coordinators on offense and defense. He did exactly that. Jim Coletto, Larry Marmee, two of the very finest assistant coaches in the country. Robin's last kick was only 21 yards. This is a beauty. Boy, did he hit that high. And a fair catch called by Parker at his own 40-yard line with three minutes and 59 seconds left in the half. Arizona State will begin from its 40, and let's hold on. Is there a flag now? It's a 46-yard kick by Robbins. Well, if there is, somebody's standing on it. I can't see it. Michigan on a touchdown and two-point conversion and another seven-pointer. Another face, face mask. mask. Now, does that does that negate the kick? Does that take it back? Or do they penalize from the possession back of the 40? Apparently, that'll be the that'll case. Be the Just, a, I'm sure, a matter of when it happened during the play itself. Just a grab of the mask, not the 15 yards. Not the yards. personal foul. Face mask during the kick by the receiving team. First down, five-yard penalty. Well, that must have had Cooper's heart in his throat because he lost the fumble recovery down at his own two-yard line prior to the second Michigan touchdown 
due to a face mask and could have lost possession there. Dick, if you go back and look, there are two fumbles, actually, and both recovered by Michigan that could have turned this game early. On the first series, Jamie Morris dropped one and grabbed it himself, very nearly recovered by the uh, Arizona State team. And that second fumble, which was recovered, both of them led to touchdowns. Those are the two drives that were most crucial. That score could be a lot different if those two fumbles had been recovered by the guys over there in the uh, maroon shirts. So it'll be a first down at the 35 as uh, Schembechler, he's arguing he wants that pumpkin. Now, one of the things you got to know is that Bo is so dominant on that sideline. John Cooper, quite the opposite. He is not going to argue with those referees. I think it does give Bo an, exam, uh, an advantage. You see a very quiet demeanor on the other side. He said, I don't complain about the official's decision. I'll worry about the things we can control. Bo, on the other hand, I think will do some intimidating. Bo grew up as a left-handed pitcher, and uh, his stars were the Cleveland Indian staff, Garcia and Feller, and Newhouser came uh, to Cleveland late in his career. Cooper said nothing to do with us. He said, I'd just soon be listening to Lindsey Nelson when I go home and put it on tape. He said, because he was a, a big Tennessee fan in the early days when uh, the Hall of Famer Lindsey Nelson was the voice of the volunteers. Now you see Bo on the sideline and showing you a bit of his temper. We ask him about that famous Shem Beckler temper. <laughs> Fortunately, most of the time that I've gotten upset, though, um, I was right. But the few times <laughs> when I was wrong, I wish I hadn't acted like I did. <laughs> He's a fighter. And not unlike uh, the man that he has so much respect for, Woody Hayes, the former Ohio State coach. Timeout, 3.59 left in the half. Well, our NBC cameras and voices will be down at La Costa for the Tournament of Champions final round. Saturday will be the final round, January 10th, a week from this Saturday, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. The Money Tournament of Champions, scheduled to compete are Fuzzy Zeller, U.S. Open champ Ray Floyd, Greg Norman, PGA champ Bob Tway. So that'll be a dandy here on NBC. Must be a little deja vu over there for John Cooper. Same situation when they played UCLA here. Behind, just before the half, on that occasion, they took it 75 yards and scored. The ball is back at the 40. Michigan had to decline the penalty. they rather take the 46-yard punt. And on first down, it's Daryl Harris for about seven. Mark Messner trips him up. Darryl Messner, Harris the all-Big Ten defensive tackle for Michigan. He's just a junior. Also in that secondary for Michigan, and we'll take a look at number 14, Tony Gant. Gant, first team academic all Big Ten, honor student in history. There he is. He was a quarterback in high school in Ohio, was the starting quarterback in an all-star game. Second quarterback behind him was Bernie Kozar. <laughs> we'll see him on Saturday quarterbacking the Browns. Ooh. No gain, in fact, a loss for Harris on that play as he tried to go wide. And McIntyre and Heron were there to greet him for a loss of two. Talk about the changes since high school. Here's Kozar already in the second year as quarterback of the Browns. And Gant finishing his collegiate career with Michigan. Michigan looking for the pass, 250. Left on the half, it's third and five. An excellent call as they were able to let the line for the Michigan Wolverines come in. Yeah, you see him retreating very quickly, driving off again. Secondary playing very deep in this situation. And Gant, finally the man who comes up to get a piece of the tackle, although he did not bring Williams down. That's a new play put in by John Cooper for this game. Van Rapphorst with good protection. Now he's going to run it. And down at the 27, a gain of 8 or 9. Eric Campbell made the tackle. The clock running at 2.05. Neither of these quarterbacks afraid to run. Van Rapphorst 
Doing a good job on that play. Could not find the open receiver. Just ducks up inside. Almost picks up the first down himself. Both teams able to move the ball, as we showed you earlier. The yardage, yardage gained almost even. We guess Arizona State a bit ahead now, but trailing 15 to 6. A very important scoring opportunity for the Devils. Second effort. First down, Darrell Harris. He's to the 22. Running up in behind Danny Villa, big All American tackle. Good job up inside. Via number 73. Tupper also with a good block. And here's the second effort. Seven yard pickup. 124 left in the first half. Harris hit hard by Thiebert. Steve Thiebert, the junior from Union Lake, Michigan. And a timeout called by Arizona State. And they'll talk it over with John Cooper with 1.16 remaining in the first half. The highly regarded head coach of the Washington Huskies, Don James, brought these uh, Sun Devils offensively in the line of the best he's ever coached against. They are solid. And one of the reasons there's Villa, Pancho Villa, number 73. Would Bob Hope say that he's so big it took the stork four deliveries <laughs> to bring him <laughs> four <laughs> trips? Very bright young man, too. Rushing yards. A big edge for Arizona State. But they need to cap it off with some points here. They've only been able to try field goals, and they're two of three. Through the hands of Aaron Cox at the goal line. Tony Gant was there for Michigan. That will bring up third down. Aaron Cox. A fleet receiver running good patterns is open briefly, but as he gets a hold of that football, Gant is right there, and I don't think he would have caught it anyway. Going through his hands again, the ball slightly high. You pull that pass down about two feet, I think he's going to pull it in. Still seem to be a catchable ball. I think, I think it could have been caught, but at the same time, Ben Rapworth seems to be throwing that ball, skying a little bit high when he's off his mark. Third and seven. Underneath to Bruce Hill, and it'll be first and goal outside the five. Box stop to move the chains. When we asked John Cooper who the biggest surprise was on this team, the first name he mentioned, Bruce Hill, said he just kind of came out of the pack has done an excellent job of using his speed and using his catching ability to pull him out of a lot of holes during the season. Clock running, 54, 53 seconds left in the half. First and goal at the six. Darrell Harris stopped by Doug Mallory. He was on the high side and down underneath one of those big linemen. Here to be Messner and Moeller. And time called by Arizona State. They have one timeout left with 44 seconds remaining. And this is a very crucial point in this game for both teams. If Michigan can stop Arizona State, force another field goal, they keep the momentum of this first half. But a touchdown by Arizona State. And then would they go for the extra pointer for two? Probably the extra point would make it 15-13. Now, Bo's decision to go for two early and the early success, that first touchdown, really has colored the composition of this whole first half. And although Arizona, Arizona State has consistently moved the football, they haven't been able to get the points on the board. And part of the enjoyment of this game is halftime, and we'll share that with you, the wonderful music and marching of both the Michigan and Arizona State bands. And a reminder of this weekend on NBC, the AFC playoffs on Saturday at noon Eastern time, NFL 86 prior to the Jets and the Browns. Berlin and I will make the trip up to Mile High Stadium for Sunday's game. On Sunday at 3.30 Eastern time, New England and Denver. Denver won that game in the regular season, 27 to 20. Both teams huddled on the sideline briefly. Gary Moeller called his defense over, gave them the word. Jim Coletto sending down a play to the offensive team for the Sun Devils. Well, let's see who called the right kind of defense or the right kind of play. Second and goal from the five. Van Rapp 
course. Can't get in. He stopped at the three. And the clock will be stopped again. Arizona State's final timeout with 35 seconds. And Messner, who has played a big first half for Michigan, 248 pound, actually a sophomore in eligibility, makes another big play. Number 60 led the team in sacks a year ago, led them again this year. Excellent quickness. It's one that you hear often mentioned. You see the stats that Dick alluded to right there. He's not one of those that you need to hide in, the, in that front seven. Mark Messner, he'll return for Michigan. So the situation with 35 seconds left for Arizona State. They don't have a timeout remaining. They're sitting on the four-yard line just inside the four of Michigan on third and goal, trailing by nine points. Now you're a defensive mind. Now if you're in that Michigan huddle, and what would you think is going to be run at? I'd anticipate the pass. Got to get that clock stopped so you can get your uh, kicking team on the field. But of course, I'm sure that that's what's going through the mind of Jim Coletto too. He's trying to he's trying to counter. I mean, it's it's a chess game right now. Coletto's Coletto's trying to figure out what Moeller's going to do. Moeller's trying to figure out what Coletto's going to do. Moeller, former head coach, as we said at Illinois, and many feel uh, Jim Coletto played here. On a UCLA team with uh, Terry Donahue, Michigan State, I feel his, his turn should come as a head coach. Double tight end. Look for the rollout here. Touchdown. Fingertip catch by Bruce Hill. He's made three excellent receptions this half. Number eight, Doug Mallory at his fingertips that football briefly just kind of juggled in the end zone in the hands of Bruce Hill. Watch Hill coming in motion. Number 29 going up inside. Now look for number eight. Mallory coming across. Touches the football. Knocks it up. Controlled and caught by Hill. Remember it was Hill early in the game that made the catch on the far sidelines of fingertip. He made the catch for a first down as well. The extra point by Bostrom makes it a 15-13 game with 29 seconds left in the half. And in a game of emotion, and you mentioned it just a moment ago, what a tremendous surge that gives you if you're on that Arizona State sideline, and it's a downer if you happen to be a Wolverine or a Wolverine fan. Van Raphorst had enough on it to drive this pass through the hands of the defender. You can almost catch that one sitting there at home or wherever you're watching this Rose Bowl. Boy, that shows you the concentration of Hill to be able to make that play as he was shielded from the ball. Well, right through one hand into Arizona State's for six. Bo felt that one shouldn't have been. I'm sure Bo was thinking just knock that ball away instead of trying to intercept it. And that very often does get a defensive back in trouble. He goes up to try and intercept that ball, and if he does not intercept it, and it goes through his fingers, it could be caught as that one was, and oh, what a big play that turns out to be. Now at 29 seconds, Michigan has all three timeouts remaining, and they've got some dangerous return men. Jamie Morris is on the far side, Eric Campbell near. Schulte was the man who made the play and a good play to give them possession right at the 50. The twin brothers out there. We talked about deja vu on that far sideline for John Cooper about what happened in that UCLA game. They took it late behind as they were in that game, took it all the way down and scored just before the half. Here they've done it again. They must like this stadium. Uh, just to refresh your memory, Arizona State in the key win, beating UCLA here in the Rose Bowl. And that got them here instead of the Bruins, who settled for the Freedom Bowl, where they beat BYU. Now Harbaugh, good field position. 
Good head to the Michigan lead. Intercepted. Intended for Morris. Eric Allen. Or is it Anthony Parker? Eric Allen, number 25, is the man who got it. And Bo is just shaking his head. Harbaugh, who had thrown everything accurately so far in this first half, except the ones he wanted to throw away, suddenly goes awry. And you have to wonder if maybe that shift in emotion didn't affect the quarterback on that play. There's a case where they didn't have to go for the big one. A couple of first downs with all your timeouts, and at least you're in field goal range. Well, I don't think they'll give him a Wolverine on the helmet for that one. And that one overthrown to Morris, who isn't a big target anyway, and Eric Allen picking it off. 19 seconds left. And Arizona State will run out the clock. Williams up the middle. Johnny Williams carried the ball. And apparently both teams will leave the field with seven seconds left to let the clock run out. Not a good way to go off the field if you're a quarterback having such a good half and yet to make that kind of mistake right at the end of the half. A downer. And Rapworth was 8 for 17 and a touchdown and Harbaugh finished the half 7 for 10 but intercepted on that last throw. So a very entertaining first 30 minutes of this the 73rd Rose Bowl Classic and the Michigan Wolverines at the intermission lead Arizona State 15 13 will be back after these messages from your local station. Statistics. We mentioned the Arizona State offensive line. Look at the rushing yardage, 113, almost double that of Michigan in the first half. Passing yardage also favoring Arizona State. They were able to drive the ball, move it much more effectively than Michigan, but often stalled and had to kick those field goals that Dick talked to you about. Turnovers, the only one in the ball game so far that uh, one turnover right at the end of the half, an interception, but there were two that could have been in that turnover column, two fumbles that were recovered, one recovered by Jamie Morris. The and Rapworth was 8 for 17 and a touchdown, and Harbaugh finished the half 7 for 10, but intercepted on that last throw. So a very entertaining first 30 minutes of this, the 73rd Rose Bowl Classic. And the Michigan Wolverines at the intermission lead Arizona State 15-13. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Statistics. We mentioned the Arizona State offensive line. Look at the rushing yardage, 113, almost double that of Michigan in the first half. Passing yardage also favoring Arizona State. They were able to drive the ball, move it much more effectively than Michigan, but often stalled and had to kick those field goals that Dick talked to you about. Turnovers, the only one in the ball game so far that uh, one turnover right at the end of the half, an interception, but there were two that could have been in that turnover column, two fumbles that were recovered, one recovered by Jamie Morris. The second one turned out not to be a fumble because of a penalty. There are the rushing statistics individually. Daryl Harris with 58 yards for the Sun Devils. Jamie Morris with 51. And Channing Williams chipping in. And those were hard-earned 45 for the fullback of the Sun Devils. As you recall, Arizona State won the toss. And Michigan gave Michigan the chance to choose the ball or end of the field. So they will get the ball to open the second half. Top receivers. Morris and Harris with three of these. Bruce Hill, his three were three tough catches, one for a touchdown. Dick, I mentioned to you how good Michigan has been in the third quarter. They've outscored their opponents 106 to 29 in the third quarter. Arizona State trailing 15-13 receives. Good kick. Driving Williams into the end zone where he'll take the touchback. We introduce the offensive lineup for Arizona State. Jeff Van Raphorst, his dad, Dick, the place kicker, Ohio State champions of the Big Ten in 1961. And he gets a final word before being sent out to his offensive unit. Channing Williams, the fullback. Daryl Harris, number 12, is the tailback. Cox and Hill are the wide receivers. Gallimore and Koss alternate at tight end and that big offensive line they call themselves the Rainbow Coalition homeboys all raised in the state of Arizona via McDaniel Thomas Kalis and Warren little misdirection 
And it didn't fool Andre McIntyre, who belts Harris no gain. McIntyre, who replaced Mike Mallory. That inside linebacker position. A reminder to those of you who may have missed the coin toss in this game. Arizona State won the toss, and you've already covered that, Dick. They elected to take the ball here in the second half. That, too, could be significant, but a very solid start here for Michigan's defense. first catch he has a first down on a 13 yard play and a flag is down and we may have a roughing the passer penalty Steve Siebert 86 from the outside way behind no question throw the flag ball at the 32 on the completed pass and now the penalty roughing the passer against the defense first down That's a dumb play. That is a dumb. Come on, Bo. <laughs> he clearly had a chance not to hit him. There's the ball no had been question. Released. He came two and a half steps after the ball was thrown. So they tack on, and that is not a good play for Michigan. Although they just had uh, the 15 yards from the 20, rather than tacking it on at the end of the play. That the ball the 35-yard line. So it's first down at the 35. I think what Bo is saying, hey, he didn't hit him that hard. <laughs> Maybe not. He's not allowed to hit him, especially from the back. Out of the eye. Darrell Harris slipping out to the 41-yard line. And again, about six. McIntyre again on the tackle for Michigan. Talking to Jim Coletto, the offensive coordinator, Arizona State, he said, we ran over 70% on the year. He said, I'd like to be more balanced than that, but we had to take advantage of the tools we had. Of course, he's talking, I think, primarily about that big, grinding offensive line. Big to Harris. The throw deep. Intercepted, but out of bounds. Ooh. Michigan had it. Garland Rivers Ooh. didn't get one foot in bounds. So very close to the turnover. And of course, that would have been the first turnover in the column for the Michigan team. Getting a chance to take that ball away. He needs to get a foot down while he has control of that football. Good call there. Apparently, his toe was on the line. And uh, from that angle, it's shielded by the Arizona State bench. But Rivers, ever so close. What perfect coverage he had on Cox. Third and four. prematurely with the tight end Gallimore. Well, that'll cost Arizona State fine. After a promising beginning for this drive, it's rather disintegrating here. Well, we have a moment to mark off the penalty. We want to salute George Simpson, our blimp cameraman. He's retiring from NBC after 36 years. High years for George at times. Columbia from Carson, California, our airship with pilot Tom Mattis from Huntington Beach. And our thanks to George Simpson and many good wishes in his retiring years. It's a portrait from high, isn't it? Third and nine. Harris and Day, two running backs, join Van Rapport's. changing his play. And it's Cox for a first down at the Michigan 43. Just before the play was run, Michigan linebacker stepping up in there to try and fake Van Rapport's down. He wasn't buying any of it. Goes quickly to Cox. Speedy receiver, excellent hands. And got the first down there, back in control. Rivers with a hit. Channing Williams slowed down by Willingham. Channing Williams, ball carrier. And then secured by the Michigan linebacking floor. 
now the Sugar Bowl we can give you a final score and here it is down in New Orleans Nebraska's Huskers this point the home team LSU's Tigers 30 to 15. This is Dick Anberg with Second Merlin Olson, Bill McAtee at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, where Michigan leads Arizona State 15-13 early in the third quarter. Off the shotgun, Williams, big hole, and the fullback has a first down at the 31. Rivers with a tackle along with McIntyre and Gant. Channing Williams, who gained 540 yards on the season, has been a very productive fullback today. Chance to watch this the misdirection in this play. Looks like it's going to be the pass. Just hand it up inside. Get a good block on Willingham, number 39. And then Williams finds room to get about an extra three yards out of it. He has 56 yards rushing today. Harris inside the 30. Short game. Around the ankles was Garland Rivers who came up from his cornerback spot. The game started with Michigan taking the opening kickoff and driving for a touchdown and then using a surprise fake on a conversion and coming up with the two points to lead 8-0. Field goal by Bostrom of Arizona State made it 8-3. Then Harbaugh snuck one in from two yards after a fumble recovered by Arizona State at its own tool was nullified by a penalty. Michigan led 15-3. Another Arizona State field goal, then a touchdown in the final minute of the half. And that's where we stand as Tupper in for Channing Williams is toppled by Moeller. Number 49. He is a classic overachiever, is he not? No question about that, Dick. And even though he doesn't have those overwhelming physical skills, he'll give you everything he has, and you better believe he's going to be in the right position to use as much as he has. It's interesting his dad, Gary, in that uh, Andy played at Pioneer High School in Ann Arbor, wouldn't recruit him. He just gave the film to Bo, said, here, look at it, you decide. He made a good choice and kept the coach's son. Bo says he likes those coaches' sons. I don't blame him. Third and nine. Good protection underneath the top. It'll be close to a first down at the 21. I think he may have it. Depends on the spot. They give him a good spot. That will be a first down. Chance to watch it from high upstairs. See the receiver going down and breaking, finding the open zone right there. See Michigan dropping back into those classic zone positions. They were able to pick Cox out of that zone and get in the football. Just outside the 20, a first down. Going for six. Instead, they'll get it to the three. It's Cox again. David Arnold, number 15, the defender. 18 more yards, the passing game. Aaron Cox, all pack 10 wide receiver. Start a little shakily in this game, throwing the ball, overthrowing his receivers early in the game, very sharp and crisp to open the second half. And he has displayed the power of his arm on those out patterns. He can throw it. Two Four tight ends in the game, Dick. Excuse me. Four yards away from the lead, Arizona State, first and goal. Williams gets half of it. Tripped up in the middle of the line. 93, David Folkertsma from Grand Rapids, Michigan, made the tackle. Folkertsma, another one of those overachievers, the kind of guy you probably would expect to find in a backup position. But he's in there, he's starting, he's giving you all he's got. He's the kind of guy you look for when you know you have an advantage with those bigger and, and quicker uh, offensive linemen. Five minutes consumed on this drive to open the second half. Second and goal from the two. Harris to the one. And a solid hit by Moeller. And the flag is down. Moeller and McIntyre, the two inside backers. We've got the offside call against Bo Schembechler's defense, and it quite possibly someone lined up offside. You try and crowd that ball in short yardage because you want to get into the bodies as quickly as you can. 
Offside. Offside. Defense. Still second down. That's the big part of the penalty. They gain only a yard or yard and a half on the penalty, but they save a down. There's the freeze frame. And it would look to me to be on the outside here. <laughs> I believe that's Billy Harris, number 56, the nose tackle, who sneaks over, and I think he's close to being out. There he is, backing off again. That's who it was. And Grant Horst. Whoa. It's down to Bruce Hill, and he makes another fingertip catch. What a oh, catch. What a catch. That's a double, oh my. His second big catch under pressure, tiptoeing that back line. It didn't look like he'd be able to keep a foot in bounds. Watch him as he's isolated, getting in behind his man right here. Now look how close he is to that back line. He's got to stay in bounds, get at least one foot down, goes up and picks it out. First one actually got three steps. What a great job of controlling his body. And in his catches, that's the fourth time the ball has actually either been very difficult or through his hands, and he's able to get the back end of the ball. Credit again, Jeff Van Rapphorst being able to pick that receiver out in traffic and get the ball there. They hold their hands in the huddle at Arizona State. When you score six, you really squeeze the mitt. Now with a score 19-15, Arizona State looks for the two-point play to get back on a seven-point game. And time is called by Michigan. They were ready to go after an extra point kick. Or rather nothing beginning you got to believe that Bruce Hill is going to get some notice from a lot of people including this man Bo Schembechler who said you've got to be kidding me we can't let him do that to us the most touchdown passes caught in a Rose Bowl game by the way is surprisingly low two is the record been done eight times over the years the most recent was Carl Durrell of UCLA in the 84 game one of them was Johnny Mac Brown. Remember him, the great movie star, 61 years ago for the University of Alabama. There's no question in my mind, Dick. One of the things that makes this game so much fun to do and so much fun to be a part of is the incredible tradition that goes along with the Rose Bowl. More than just a football game, more than a parade, this is an event and something we, we can all thrill to, no matter whether you're here or whether you're at home watching. And that home may be anywhere in the world. Hill with his second touchdown to become the ninth man in Rose Bowl history to catch two. Now they've asked to have the ball moved over close to the hash, which, been, which has been done. And they're going to go for the two points. Wide field to the offense's right. Lead by 19-15. Actually trying to make it a six point, get up to 21-15. Good protection. Did he get in bounds? No. Aaron Cox. Now it's not like the NFL where if you're going to come down in the play but are knocked out of bounds with a good hit that it counts. In this case you've got to get one foot down and the defensive play by Mallory was a beauty. No question about it. He would have come down with one foot in bounds but Mallory knocks him out of bounds. Great defensive play by Mallory. And Michigan, after allowing the touchdown, dodges the two-point conversion. The 1987 Rose Bowl is brought to you by Toyota. Looking out for you has made Toyota number one in compact truck sales. By AT&T, the right choice. And by Hertz. You don't just rent a car, you rent a company. Happy New Year card from high over the Rose Bowl, where with 925 remaining in the third quarter, Arizona State leads for the first time over Michigan 19 to 15. Bostrom kicks it off. That's a change from Shu. Comes down to Eric Campbell, 20, 25. You can hear the pads pop at the 27. As Michigan takes the field offensively. Offensive guard Michael Dames has not played today. Dave Chester, a junior from Titusville, Florida, is in his spot. He's suffering from the flu. And one of the reasons we've seen a lot of Doug Mallory, Ivan Hicks also battling the flu. The 
last two times Arizona State has gotten the football, they've put it in the end zone. This is a crucial drive for Michigan. From the 27, Arizona State outnumbered Michigan in vocal power. The fans, McMurtry, not tall enough. But boy, does he have nice size. Merlin, you pointed out when they wear that number one, you think it's a smaller player. But McMurtry is 6'3", 205 pounds. He, uh, he was the number one pick of the Boston Red Sox. They offered him a six-figure deal as a right-handed hitting center fielder. As we said, they look at him as a possible Daryl Strawberry, elected to play college football instead. Michigan was after another pretty good outfielder, Willie Wilson, who was going to go to... Uh, the Ann Arbor campus decided to stay with the Kansas City Royals. That one went the other way. Harbaugh on the keeper. Scott Stephen, number 90, and Sate Sapolu, number 94. Two of the quickest defensive men, in fact, probably the two quickest defensive men on that team, big men. That's that lateral speed. We talked at the very beginning of this broadcast, you're really not going to beat this run to the ball defense by going laterally. If you can't split them up inside and make your yardage running there, you're going to have a tough time. And third and long, Harbaugh moving up and then throws it behind Morris incomplete. Here that Harbaugh might have been able to tuck that away and run it for a first down, but saw Morris. But Morris was moving one way and Harbaugh the other, and Arizona State's going to get it on a punt. Just a little drop pass. Harbaugh, who faked it down field, I think maybe surprised Morris with that pass. I think Morris believed it was past the hook field. Anthony Parker, the junior from Tempe, 22-yard average punt return as Monty Robbins will kick it from around his 18. His high kicks have denied Parker any return. And a flag down. Too much time. We can't see that 25-second clock from here. We'll have to let the official decide. But Dick... Interesting that the second half has started out exactly the opposite of the first half. First half, Michigan took the first drive all the way down and scored, and then Arizona State was stopped. Exactly the opposite here, as Arizona State takes the drive, goes all the way down, and it's Michigan whose first drive has been shut down rather dramatically. Dead ball, delay of the game, offense, still fourth down. You mentioned Michigan being tough scoring in the second half. Well, Arizona State has been tough defensively in the second half. They've allowed only 51 points all year in the third and fourth quarters combined. Robbins hits a honey. Way back to Parker at his 27. And Parker to the 35. Where Gerald White, number 22, made the tackle. A 51-yard punt. Eight yards on the return. On behalf of the University of Michigan football team and the staff, I'd like to wish everyone out there a very happy 1987. Yeah, we thank you, Coach Jim Beckler. His uh, New Year's days have not been very happy in the Rose Bowl. This is his eighth trip. He's won only once, lost six times in Pasadena, trying to reverse the trend as the Pac-10 underdogs the last five years and again this year the Pac-10 has been the winner of this game and Big Ten has escaped with only two wins and since 1970. 1915 Arizona State and this is Daryl Harris. Good defense by Mester and Harris. Billy Harris 56 the nose guard. When you use a slanting defense, you hope you guess right. On this last play, watch Billy Harris, the nose tackle, and he's slanting out into the play. Going to have a chance to drive right into the blocker, move himself outside, and of course, that's the hole that Arizona State wanted, and it's Billy Harris at the bottom of the stack. No game. Second and ten, and timeout for Van Rampoors. Didn't like the 
the defense for the play call, so spends one of those precious timeouts. Each team has used one early in the second half. Now, both coaches were so cooperative, and at times I thought Bo Schembechler was mellowing a bit. He was so nice to us. Well, Dan Deerdorf, who's now a broadcaster, went back to do the banquet back at Michigan. He said, look, he said, I'm 38 years old. I got three kids. He said, I got a job. I travel the world. He said, I'm still scared to death of Bo. <laughs> He'll get to respect. <laughs> and in a way, that's part of that whole parentage player to head coach and this is when he really gets tough things are not going well he'll be growling on that sideline second and ten after the timeout by Arizona State and it's Paul Day one of the little running backs for the Sun Devils and he earns four pays for it as well Todd Schulte part of the twin linebacker combination identical twins Todd and Tim Schulte and David Arnold number 15 on the tackle Day's first carry of the game Again, I think good to mention the fact the difference in the way these two coaches approach. They're switching of players in and out. Arizona State constantly running people in and out of the game. And at the end of this game, there's no question they will have more energy, more freshness than the Michigan Wolverines. Aaron Cox and a first down. The Michigan 42. 22 more for the Arizona State passing game. Amazing how emotion can turn the flavor of a game, establish and lose the confidence. We saw early in the game how Van Rapphorst was having a hard time getting to some of those receivers who were open. That timing so far in this second half, excellent. When the ball needs to be there, it's there. 5'10", 175 pound Junior Cox with another catch is six. And Raphorse sliding out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Dieter Heron was on the chase. Arizona State, the last four possessions. Has kicked a field goal, kicked a field goal, scored a touchdown, and then scored another here on the first possession of the second half. That's exactly what you were alluding to. Thinking with Harry Coyle, our director, Larry Cirillo, our producer, down the truck. A great job of putting this game out to all those who are watching and listening. Ball Day into the clear for a moment, and then someone slammed the door on him. Day. A senior from Kearney High School down in San Diego, California, David Arnold and Doug Mallory made the hit. Both these uh, running backs, Harris and Day, are around the 175 pound range. They're slick but not overpowering. Arizona State over 50% all year in third downs, 8 for 11 today. to the tight end Stein Koss. Koss Schulte, number 41, inside out, just waiting for Koss to break inside. Put a helmet on him just as he got his fingers on that football. Kind of hard to catch when you're being jolted that way. Apparently, John Cooper, fourth down, is not going to kick the ball. He's at the 35. Too long for a field goal. Too close to the goal line to put it. And he's going to gamble on fourth. And four. Well, we saw Bo Gamble earlier. Here's John Cooper taking a chance. Now they're trying to draw him off sides. Okay. There comes the delay of game. All play. right. Well, good, good coaching. He said, all right. He said, we tried. It didn't work. Now we'll kick the ball. Five-yard penalty would have been a first down. Good discipline by the Michigan defense. I'm sure they were more ready for that than I was. <laughs> and now the punting team on the field. Mike Shu, who averaged 39 yards a kick this year. Shu has kicked 17 times dead inside the 20 yard line, so he's been good at pooching the ball. Well, he just got that one away and gets a wonderful roll. And Arizona State downs it at the two yard line. 
37 yard punt inside the five no return. What a great name for a kicker. <laughs> Shu S C H U H. From 1978 to 1981, he earned four varsity letters with the Maize and Blue, Michigan's most valuable player in 1981, and he was also named the 1981 Rose Bowl Most Valuable Player. Now with the Houston Oilers, Butch Wolfuck. Wolfuck, who led the Wolverines to the last Big Ten win six games ago when they beat Washington. And there's a man that's after his all-time Michigan rushing record, Jamie Morris. 51 yards today. He had 1,039 on the year. He gets the call. Nearly three. Check that Gerald White. Gerald White and Stacy Harvey makes the stop. Dick, we talked earlier about the wristband worn by Van Rampoorst. Harbaugh wears a wristband himself on his left wrist with the plays written on that wristband. But I don't know if he has any good plays when you're backed up against your own end zone like this. This is tough, tough territory to get out of. That was Morris. Two yards on first down. And Harbaugh going to throw from his end zone. And Paul Jokic has it for a first down at the 27. So he sent his big six foot eight inch wide receiver downfield and Anthony Parker made the defensive play and that gets Bo out of that serious end of the field down in the yellow part of the end zone. Get you some breathing room and I said there wasn't a good play. There is no good play. There are makeable plays and Bo is able to do one and how how interesting it is that maybe 10 15 years ago a Michigan team would have probably run the ball again. Four minutes, 27 seconds left in the third period. Michigan trails by four. Skip McClendon, number 88, was there first on Jamie Morris. Jamie Morris carries in the 30-yard line where he's stopped by Skip McClendon. Similarities in both of these defenses. One of the things they do is they'll stack to the tight end. Here's the tight end coming in motion. He started out over here. He goes all the way across to change the strength of the offensive formation. And of course now they'll run in behind that tight end. Get an extra block in there from the strong guard Michael Hammerstein. Second down and seven. Mark Hammerstein. That's right. Over the middle and over the hands of Jokic. McClendon, 88, the all pac 10 defensive end, was pressuring Harbaugh. Harbaugh, who set a Michigan record this year with over 2,500 yards passing. That's tougher than it looks. You don't know who's coming up to greet you on that blind side when you're looking back. 3.44 left in the third.
Dick Harris looking back at that last series before the half when Harbaugh threw the bad pass. He played so well up to that point, and we asked the question, what will that do to his confidence? He has not really played well since that pass was thrown. Meanwhile, Jeff Van Rathorst from El Cajon, California, went to Grossmont High School. If memory serves me, that produced another pretty good quarterback that high school named Brian Seip, who went to San Diego State and then on to the Cleveland Browns. First down. The other thing we're going to see, and it was a trend that began to develop in the last series, Sun Devils ran before the half, is they're beginning to be able to exploit the strength and the quickness of that big offensive line. We mentioned that Michigan is undermanned in that defensive front, and right now they're uh, they're having trouble getting things stopped. Harris now leading all rushers with 80, and his fullback Channing Williams now has two more than uh, the Wolverines' top runner Jamie Morris. strength but Michigan denies only two yards on the carry Billy Harris David Fulkertsma team up on the tackle well you see him go back to the huddle Channing Williams in that huddle is number 62 Randall McDaniel you want to talk about an athlete playing in the offensive line 62 McDaniel he runs the 40 and 468 he is the all-american power weightlifter drug-free power weightlifting competition the collegiate champion both at heavyweight and super heavyweight he beat the guys at way over 275 he's strong and he weighs 260 and runs like a deer wide open as time costs and the tight end first down at the 24 of michigan eric campbell with a tackle first down Working on number five, Eric Campbell, and that's just a quick turnout to the tight end, Stein Koss, both tight ends. It's such an advantage to have two tight ends that you can just whip in and out of that game. Those big men do get tired, but he got two, it really helps. Good play action. Incomplete and almost deflected into the arms of Eric Campbell, Channing Williams, the intended receiver, and that ball bounding to Campbell, who, for the second time this game, a Michigan Defender isolated on the long side of the field almost had him drop uh, in the hands for a touchdown the other way. I think that's what Michigan needs right now a turnover. They need something to pick them back up, somebody to grab a fumble and go for a touchdown or grab an interception and move downfield. Something to get that uh, energy, that adrenaline flowing again. Second and 10. to the 16 a couple of yards shy of a first down one of the dangers of stunning and blitzing is that you commit yourself very quickly watch Dave Fulkertsman starting inside they're going to just push him inside and drive him off and make room here for this running play again the run out of the shotgun and look how much room there is inside when you can get that far up without having to make a move you know you're going to pick up some yardage third down about a yard and a half Van Rapphorst complete to Chris Garrett the 6-4 wide receiver from St. Paul Minnesota has five yards and a first down Dieter Heron with a tackle Van Rapphorst very fortunate on that play he has thrown behind his receivers a couple of times here in the last throws and that one could have gotten him in trouble receiver able to turn all the way around and in traffic control that football Tony Johnson wide to the left Cox split right first down at the Wolverine 12 Harris to the 10 Clock 
running down the final seconds of the third period. No advantage in the uh, end of the field. There's no wind today. A day that uh, approached about 70 degrees in Southern California. I think you'll see the Sun Devils just let that clock run out, content to eat it up and wait for the fourth quarter to begin. They play all their home games at night and therefore they have been a national secret. They don't get any publicity in the East. The Sun Devils have come out in the sun. I wonder if they have better eyes than the teams that play in the day, Dial. Well, in the sun, they lead by four and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Larry Coyle, our director, Larry Cirillo, our producer, and their fine camera crew. Well, they, <laughs> the final moments of this January 1st daytime disappearing and a beautiful shot off to the west. Lights are on at the Rose Bowl. It's second down for Arizona State at the Michigan 10. Looking to try and stop them for a field goal. Maybe take the ball away. They cannot afford the touchdown. We open the fourth quarter. Play action by Van Raphorst. And he throws it away. The man he was looking for, Gallimore, had three Wolverines around him. I don't think Gallimore could get up there 20 rows into the stands, and that's about where that ball was thrown. Definitely thrown out of the stadium. Right now, as I mentioned, Michigan defense thinking one thing, we've got to shut them down here. Of course, the field goal would make this a most interesting contest and would put Michigan just one big play away from tying the game. Field goal would be a 22-15 score, seven-point margin. Third and eight. Channing Williams, and he shy of the first down, hit at the seven-yard line. McIntyre and Moeller, the M boys for the M team. And on comes the place kicker, Kent Bostrom, as he'll go for his third field goal, which would tie the Rose Bowl record. Let's see if... Arizona State doesn't unbalance that line. When they kick from the hash mark, and they're doing it again, they put an extra man to the wide side of the field because they feel like they need more time on that side. 25-yard attempt, and it's good. Arizona State 22, Michigan 15, an unusual score that's been dictated by the very first score of the game when Michigan went and succeeded at the two-point conversion. The 1987 Rose Bowl is brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. We're working together to be the best. By American Airlines, something special in the air. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. 14 minutes, 16 seconds left in Arizona State. Once down 15 to 3 in the second quarter. 19 unanswered points to take the lead at 22-15. But Michigan, a touchdown and an extra point away from a tie and within range of a win with one touchdown. Eric Campbell... 20, 28-29 yard line, knocked out of bounds. Mike Tingstad, linebacker. Academic All-American, or Big Ten uh, academic, uh, All-Big Ten team. Pac-10, and actually Mark's brother, Mike, also an academic star and uh, running back at Washington State University here on the West Coast, rooting for his brother today. I guess they really wouldn't put an Arizona State player on that Big Ten academic <laughs> team, would they? Not fair. All right, here goes Michigan. They have not generated much in this second half. Harbaugh off play action to Gerald White. Squeaks out to the 34, a gain of five. Robbie Boyd, number 26, a sophomore from Santa Ana, made the tackle. This is the kind of situation you really dig down and find out a lot about your people. Harbaugh has been good at bringing his team back. In fact, Michigan this year came back from being behind at halftime numerous games. In fact, they were down to Notre Dame, down to Iowa, down to Ohio State, tied with Florida State and Hawaii. Came back to win all of those games. Harbaugh has a new wide receiver, number 40, John Polisar is in, but it's White. The wishbone gains only two. 
great Clark in the thick of the pile. A colorful crowd here at the Rose Bowl today. The official attendance, 103,168 to see this 73rd game. And a man who played in the first game of the pact between the Big Ten and the Pac-10, Alex Agassi, played for that Illinois team that came out here for the 47 game 40 years ago, is on the sidelines with Bo Schembechler. Catching this ball right dead on the sideline in traffic. Ball a little late getting there. Watch him. Oh, ball batted away. And he did have his feet on the line. But what a fine defensive play to knock it out of there. By Parker, that leather ball going into the maroon uh, jerseys across the way. Tough to see that it was deflected. So the kicking game on again as Monty Robbins punts for Michigan. Parker at the other end. Again, he slaps it off the side of his foot. Gets a good roll, however. And that's going to wind up an excellent Michigan kick all the way to the 15-yard line. 49 yards, no return. Arizona State leads by seven. The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. Sure, the pride is back. Plymouth Sundance and Plymouth Voyager are the proof. The pride is back. Plymouth Sundance, the unbelievable American under $7,800. Sundance, the best value of any car in its class. Versatile Plymouth Voyager, front wheel drive, car-like handling, spacious Plymouth Voyager. Plymouth 550 protection plan backs them both. The pride is back, born in America, again. Throughout North America and around the world, countries viewing another Rose Bowl from Pasadena. Finland, ah, Yuva Paiva, all the Sumalinans. And all the American forces radio and televisions networks around the world and uh, best to the men and women in the armed services and live reporting our friends from Japan how they love American sports and of course host a collegiate game every year in Tokyo part of the colorful surroundings here at the Rose Bowl Arizona State deep in its own end at the 15. Michigan looking for a turnover. Channing Williams. Just when it appeared he had some room to go. Good play by 15 David Arnold who came up from the secondary to assist Andy Moeller. 12 minutes, 9 seconds left in the fourth period. Two yards on the play, second and eight, and Paul Day, the backup tailback, is in for Arizona State. Check it now. Harris is back in, and he gets the call. He's quick. Out to the 24, a yard shy of a first down before McIntyre, the junior from Chicago, can make the tackle. Andre You've got to believe that that Michigan defense beginning to tire some here. Very quick explosion into the line. And again, you got a chance to get to the sideline and get a rest. Andre McIntyre, 54, the man from the backside to pull him down. But gosh, you want to catch him before they get that far into your secondary. And Harris is looking for 73 via his All-America tackle, and he put quite a block on Aaron. Third and one, and a play action by Van Raphorst. Open and a drop. Bruce Hill, who has made some sensational catches, 
That was one of the easier ones. Maybe the easiest one he had all day, and uh, that'll that'll burn you. Hill was a defensive back for a couple of years before they moved him over to receiver. Here he is in isolation. He's got time, drives his man off. Good job. He's sitting there by himself. That <laughs> lost the concentration. Ducked his head back over his shoulder. Aaron, the kick by Shue to Eric Campbell, 40, and a good return to the 46-yard line. And Michigan at midfield has the ball after a 41-yard punt and Campbell's 11-yard return. Just under 11 minutes remain. Arizona State by a touchdown. From the Goodyear blimp, those marvelous shots as dust falling here in Southern California. A reminder here in the fourth quarter with 11 minutes left. We'll be going to the Orange Bowl in Miami right after the conclusion of this game. Look how tough that Arizona State defense has been in the fourth quarter. Just 27 points allowed. Michigan trailing by seven starts from its own 46. Jamie Harris. <laughs> They've done a good job of shutting off Morris, haven't they? And they continue to try the middle, as you predicted. But Arizona State is stiffened. They not only have stiffened, but you see them. You see that quickness beginning to assert itself on the defense. When John Cooper went to Arizona State, he said, we're going to do two things, more than two, really, but two very important things. We're going to be in better condition, and we're going to have a stronger team, physically stronger team. Good weight training. They've done both of those. Morris lined up behind Perriman. Second down and eight. Harbaugh. Open is McMurtry, but he's out of bounds. Can't get it anyway. Yeah, McMurtry, Merlin, when we went out to see Michigan practice, and you see them for the first time up close, and there are 100 men out there running around, and in just about two minutes after we had practiced, you can't take your eyes off McMurtry. What a beautifully skilled, his motion, his physical size. He's tough to keep your uh, eyes away from. He will certainly mature as a player, too. One of the things he does not have yet is that sense of the sideline. Not quite comfortable at knowing where his feet are. He'll get that. He'll get a lot of time to learn. Right now, though, they need a first down. Third and nine. Five defensive backs for Arizona State. Harbaugh. To McMurtry. And a first down at the Arizona State 33. Boy, that's a tough throw by Harbaugh. We saw Van Rathhorst running to his left. We mentioned then that this is as tough a throw to make for a quarterback who's right-handed as you can have. Harbaugh does have the advantage of getting stopped a little bit before he wraps it. Well, he didn't either. He just wrapped it in there, saw the receiver come open, and fired that football. That is an excellent pass. Jamie Morris with a block on McClendon gave Harbaugh some extra time. Wishbone. And not much there. Jim Reynosa, 265-pound senior from Silmar, California, went to San Fernando High School. He is another powerlifting champion there to make the tackle. When Bo Schembechler put the wishbone into the offensive mix for Michigan, he certainly complicated the lives of defensive coaches around the Big Ten. In fact, John Cooper said they had to spend 30 to 40 percent of their practice time preparing for the wishbone. They just don't face it in the Pac-10, and you don't face it except uh, for Michigan in the Big Ten. And it's even tougher when you have only one week to repair in the Big Ten. Morris on a delay, trying to buy time to speed. Greg Clark. Wow, what a play. We talk about quickness, foot quickness, foot speed. You just saw it from Greg Clark. Jamie Morris is quick enough in his own right. You watch the way number 36 closes on Morris as Morris tries to make the big play going outside. Right-hand side, number 36 is going to fly into your screen right there. Look at that, just bam, knocks him down. 96, Kalani Wright was a man who forced Morris back into his own backfield, and this time it's Sean Patterson, a senior, 
Thought he might not play, and he's playing against the All-American Elliott, making the sack, the first of the game. Well, you gave, when we talked about the strengths of these two teams, Merlin Olson, Arizona State, the nod on defense, and they've shown it the second half. Well, I think that advantage of rolling your people in and out, of keeping that defense fresh into the fourth quarter is really beginning to pay the dividends. Robbins roots it high. Fair catch at the nine by Parker. Arizona State will start from deep in its own end. 36-yard kick. Seven minutes, 36 seconds left. Don't forget, next on NBC Sports, the Sooners and the Razorbacks are matched up in the Orange Bowl. And, of course, all the festivities down there, their wonderful halftime. Don Cricky and Bob Trumpy standing by for the report from Miami, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. The Sooners denied a national championship by Miami, the team that you'll see tomorrow night on NBC primetime, 8 o'clock Eastern time, when the Hurricanes take on the Lions of Penn State. Johnson's boys against the Paterno game. With all the collegiate marbles there to grab. Meanwhile, it's Arizona State leading 22-15, midway through the fourth quarter, deep in their own end. Darrell Harris for a couple. Arizona State has not lost the ball on a fumble or an interception today, and that has been typical of the Sun Devil team all year. John Cooper talks about error-free offensive football, about maintaining.